Okay, so we often get a lot of questions about power cuts. Now in power cuts, there's three main things that you want to watch out for. The first of which is temperature. Now the good news is that most marine tanks are larger than tropical tanks. They usually have bigger water volume and thicker glass, so they hold the temperature much better. As long as the temperature goes down slowly and comes up slowly, you're going to be all right. So don't do anything silly like put warm water in there or try and speed it up because the raise in temperature is probably going to do more harm than good. The fish are happy down to about 16 C for a few hours and that's not going to cause them too much of a problem so don't worry too much about temperature and don't go wrapping the tank up in blankets and things unless it's in a very very cold location because that will affect gas exchange and that's a far bigger problem. The second problem is ammonia and this is fairly easy to solve. The easiest way of doing it is either pour, pouring a small bottle of ATM colony in there if you've got one to hand or using polyfilter which will block, it, block up any excess ammonia. There's lots of other products that do it as well, but those are the two that I'd use and I'd recommend to always have, you know, a little, little uh, pack of polyfilter on standby is always a good idea. Third big problem is gas exchange. Now, as long as the surface of the water is very clear and clean, then you're not going to have too much of a problem. However, if you've got a little bit of surface film or if you filled a lot of oily fish, that you can form a, a minute layer of, of oil on the surface and stop gas exchange and that can be a very big problem at all indeed. A small battery powered air pump will clear it and keep it clear quite nicely so it's worth having one of those for an emergency if you do get any oily issues on the tank on a regular basis. Uh, failing that just disturbing the surface gently with a whisk or something like that if you see an oil film will get around that problem. And there is one more thing to consider as well, and that is stagnant water inside devices. So if you've got something like a canister filter, or a biopower reactor, or a skimmer, or something like that, as soon as that power goes off, that water is going to stand inside there and start generating gases. Now, in a skimmer, that's not going to cause too much of a problem. Anywhere where biological activity is happening, like a canister filter, or inside a biopower reactor, after a few hours, those bacteria can't can start producing some really nasty gases such as hydrogen sulfide, nitrous oxide, methane, things like that. So the ideal thing to do is before the when the power comes back on, is when the power goes off, sorry, unplug the device so that it doesn't come on and start pumping toxic water into the tank. When the power is back on, take the device apart, drain the water out of it, refill it with clean water for the tank and then switch it back on again. If it's only an hour or two, that's not too bad, but on longer power cuts, you really don't want that stagnant water going back into the tank, especially on a biopower reactor. One more problem to watch out for on a power cut would be if you're carbon dosing. And if you are carbon dosing and the power goes out at a critical moment just after you put the dose in, you can have a very big problem because the carbon dosing can remove all the oxygen from the water and create massive levels of carbon dioxide, and that can be a full wipe at that point. This is one of the reasons why we don't recommend carbon dosing for the vast majority of reef hobbyists. If you are carbon dosing, look at other viable alternatives such as sulfur-based denitrification through either our live bacteria revolution or a biopower reactor or some other method which is far safer and more controllable than it would be with carbon dosing. Also make sure you check out all our other videos as well for other handy tips on running a reef aquarium.